Welcome to another episode of Spatial Data Discovery. Today's episode, we are going to be looking at how to take a spatial data set and turn it into an animation. So if you go to our website, I have our example here, which is the breathing of the terrestrial biosphere. So what I've taken is an HDF file that has the monthly enhanced vegetation index data at 0 0.05 degrees. And I've resampled it from HDF to ASCII raster format. And the sampling was 10 times the original resolution. So I went from 0 0.05 degrees to 0 0.5 degrees resolution and converted it from HDF4 to ASCII raster. I've already done this and we see that I have my 12 months from 2006 enhanced vegetation index at half degree resolution resampled. So we have our ASCII raster formats, which we know have our number of rows, number of columns, our XLL corner, YLL corner, cell size, no data value, followed by all of the wonderful raster data inside. All right, how to turn that into an animation. So I'm going to be using QGIS to do this. So QGIS, the version that I'm using is 3.10.3. And I'm going to create a new empty project. And, and before I upload the raster data, what I want to do is go into settings, which are up here, come down to options. And in the CRS, where it says CRS for layers, when a new layer is created or when it's loaded that has no CRS, what should it do? And what I want it to do is default to WGS 1984, so I'm going to use the default layer CRS. That way, each layer, as they are added to the project file, will automatically get put into WGS 84. And for longitude, latitude, that's actually uh, what we want. All right, so then it's just a matter of coming up to adding our raster data sets. And here are our 12 raster data sets. And I'll just click open and add. And we will see that it does have undefined, which is pretty standard for ASCII raster but it says it's defaulting to WGS84. So we should get our data sets added in. And here they are, our 12 data sets added in to our project. And you can click through the visibility so that we can see all of the raster data sets. January to December. And if we look at them, we'll see that they are single band gray ver currently. Min to max stretching is actually read from the file. So we can look at the individual files and we'll notice that the min and max values are different for each one. And that's because each month is going to have its own unique minimum and maximum value. Now, when you're creating an animation, you want to make sure that your min and max values are the same for each month. Otherwise, the scaling goes off and people will have a hard time understanding what the data actually represent. So if we come back here, uh, we go to our, oh golly, You can go to Earth Data's LPDAC, which is where the data was originally from. We see this is the MODIS Terra Vegetation Indexes monthly global at 0 0.05 degree. I just did arithmetic mean for resampling them from 0.05 to 0.5, so the scale should still be the same. If we scroll down and look at the layers, we see that the valid range of the values goes between minus 2,000 and 10,000, and that the scale fal scaling factor is 1 ten thousandth. So that's what we're expecting for our data sets. And if we do look at these, we do see that they are between about minus 2,000, and they go up to about 10,000. OK. And we know that we should scale them by one ten thousandth. 
All right, so now we know what our scaling factor is and our valid range, and it's now just a matter of applying the symbology that we want to our data sets. So the first one I'm gonna start with is January, and we see that it's currently set to single band gray. I'm gonna change that to single band pseudo color. Uh, this is now minimum minus 2000 max, 7621. I'm going to want to change that. And currently the interpolation method is set to linear and it's set to color band greens. Maybe I actually want to do this one differently and do it in discrete values. That way they kind of blob them together. And greens seem reasonable for vegetation. I don't know that I want it to be continuous, so I'll do equal interval, six classes from minus 2,000 to 10,000. And we see equal interval has a nice job of putting zero all the way up to infinity or greater than 8,000. Now the labels are a little bit misleading because we know the scaling factor is actually, we should divide these all by 10,000. Maybe I don't like this weird little less than equal than sign, so I'm gonna come over here and actually steal the less than equal than sign from ampwhat.com. And this is going to be less than or equal to zero. And this is going to be zero. Maybe I want to do 0, 0.0 to 0 0.2. This is going to be 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, this is 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, oh, that's not being very friendly, And this is going to be 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. Again, it's not being friendly. And then we know that the maximum of this actually stands out to 1. All right. So we now have adjusted the labels so that they do correspond with the scaling factor that we have. All right, now we don't wanna have to do this 12 times, so to save us a little bit of a headache, well first let me apply it and see what it looks like, and that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna come down here to style and come up here to save style. My workspace, I'm just gonna call this modus, and click save. And now in my workspace folder, you'll see that I have this modus.qml file. So this state saves the, the style for the raster layer. So I don't have to reapply it every time. So then I come up to February and we see that it is single band pseudo color again, or single band gray. Now I can come down to style, come up here to load style and find my QML. And we see that we can apply the same colors in the same scale to the new layer. And I'm gonna do that now for each of my 12 layers.
All right, once I have the style that I have chosen for each of my layers, maybe I wanna go through and just double check to see how they look. And I can click through the visibility to see how it impacts over the, the year. And when you have what you like, now it's time to create the output through uh, QGIS's print layout. So in the print layout, what I'm going to do is create a new, you can give it a name. I'm gonna leave it unnamed. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn the visibility off on all of these except for January. And here is my print layout. In the print layout, we have a couple more tools to our uh, availability. I'm going to add a new map. So this just adds the map of what we had in the QGIS uh, project file. You can move it around, center it, what have you. Over here, you can change to move the item content so you can zoom in and zoom out. You may find that it's hard to adjust the content inside so that it fits the, the canvas. So instead, come down here to the extents and we know that we need to go from minus 180 to positive 180. And the minimum would probably, if we don't care about Antarctica, minus 60, maybe minus 66 to positive 90. And that gives us the canvas that we want for mapping out our global view and maybe we want to draw some grid lines on here so you can come down here to the grids and we can add grids maybe at every 45 degrees on the X and maybe every 60 degrees on the Y uh, that way we can see our prime meridian and equator Maybe you don't like how dark that gray is. We can come in here and maybe make it a little bit lighter gray. There we go. And then maybe we don't like that solid line. So let's go to simple line and change it to a dotted line, nice and faint, but still visible to help us out. Maybe we want to add, uh, a frame to this. So where it is frame? Put a frame, maybe a little bit darker, maybe a little bit thicker. Now we have a nice outline for our map. Okay, maybe now we'd like to have a title. So over here we get the text box add text maybe that actually corresponds to our data set so this is modus vegetation index uh, yeah we'll just call it modus terra vegetation or this is the enhanced vegetation index Enhanced vegetation index at 0 0.5 degrees. All right, that font's probably much too small to read, so let's make it something more readable. Maybe we put it in Noto Sans 24 point font. That's a little bit better. To make this easier to line up, I'll just center the text. All right, modus terra enhanced vegetation index at half a degree. Now we want to probably to add a legend so that we can tell what the colors are. So over here, we find where the legend is and we click to add. 
and we notice immediately that it tries to put all 12 layers in here and we certainly don't want quite so many. I'm gonna turn off the auto update and then I'm gonna delete all but one of the layers. All right, so now I just have one. Now it says January and I'm gonna to want to change this for each month and we see that the, the labels at least have come in the way that we want them. So one of the things we might want to do is instead of having this sort of vertically, and we want it maybe horizontally. So over here where it says columns, I can change the columns to six and split them up. We see, okay, that's not too bad. But we still see the first column has that title that we don't want. So up here, you can actually right click on the title and go to hidden. And now we see that that title goes away. So we see our color bar across the bottom, our text here, but now we don't know what month this is. So we need to come in here and add another text box. And I'm gonna say that this is 2006, January 1st. Now, oh, I guess it would be a good idea to make sure that the font's readable. Uh, we can just do Noto Sans again and maybe change the font this time to 18. This text box is too big. And make it easier to line it up by centering it. Okay. So now we have our title, our date, our legend, and our map. The size of the window maybe is just a little bit too big. So I'm over here, I'm gonna right click and go to page properties and we see that it is an A4 size, which is a paper size and landscape. Perhaps that's not what I want. So I'm gonna come down here to custom and the width is okay, but maybe the height isn't right. So I'm gonna shrink it up a little bit here. Uh, maybe I can bump that up a little bit. And then go back to the page properties, knock that down. Okay, so there's a nice framed map. And currently what we see is the January data. That's because it's the only one visible. If I come up here and tick, the February box, I can come back over here to my map and refresh it, and now it's February. But the catch is the text hasn't changed to indicate that it's February. So we will have to update the text for each of these. All right, so let's come back here and start with January. I'm going to refresh that. Here's my image. How do I save it? I come up here to export as image. And I'm gonna call this Modus EVI 2006-01. Save it in my workspace folder and it says, what resolution, what size do you want it at? You can play around with the numbers here. I'm just gonna leave it as default for the time being. And we've created our first image, which is Modus EVI 2006-01. You can take a look at it and there it is. All right, now I have to do this for each of them. So I come back over here and I'm gonna tick up to the February. Here I can change the, the display and then here I need to remember to change this to February. Now the reason that I chose this as my date format is because when the animation goes, this number will be the only thing that changes in addition to the colors in here, and will actually not skip around and kind of draw the eye away from, from what you want them to see. So here we have our February. I come up here to export, and I just update that to two, and save. And now I'm gonna do this for each of the other layers.
Okay. Now that I have saved all 12 of my layers as PNG files, I can take a look at them and there they are. One, two, three, four, five, seven, 12. Lovely. All right. So now I have my images, but I don't have my animation. So what do I do to get my animation? One option available to you is using GIMP. So this is GIMP, uh, let's see, what does it say about? 2.820, this is an older version. There are newer versions of GIMP available and there are nice user um, guides and forums, etc., to help guide you through how to use it. One of the things that we can do with GIMP is to create an animated GIF. I'm not going to use an animated GIF as the final animation, but I'm gonna use it as a starting point. So in order to create my animated GIF, I'm going to first open my January layer, which is in my workspace. There's January. So here is the first layer that I've opened. And to be able to sort of stack all of the other images on top of this, I come up here to File, op uh, Open as Layers, and then I'll pick February to December, and they will bring them all in as layers. And we see them over here, January through December. So now I have all my layers available, not unlike a GIS, we can come in here and turn the visibility off and on to see what they look like. All right, now I want to optimize this for an animation, but optimization takes a little bit of time and we see that this, these images are 3000 pixels by 2000 pixels and my final video is only going to be able to be at most 910 pixels wide. So might as well go ahead and do an image and come down here to scale image and go ahead and scale it to 910. And the resolution for this can be 72 pixels, uh, which is optimized for the web. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale it. All of them will drop down and we can get a better view of them here. All right, so now I have a reasonable resolution. The pixel depth is okay. And if I come up here to filters and come down to animation, I will see that there is an optimize for GIF. So I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna let it run the optimization. So this creates a new sort of project window, if you will, and you'll see that the difference now is that the first sort of base layer has the background color white, and then each layer above it has been shrunk to size, has transparencies, and will only cover over the previous layer so that in sequence you will see just what changes from sort of slide to slide or frame to frame. All right, now that I have this optimized, I can come up here to File and Export As. Desktop is fine and I can save it as a .gif or you can come down here and find GIF to make sure the file extension matches and click export. It's gonna ask you what you wanna save it as. I wanna make sure I tick the box that says as animation. Here where it says, how do you want it to loop? I want mine to loop forever. You can choose the delay between frames. So for me, I'm going to choose 150 milliseconds. And then the disposal, because each layer builds on top of itself, I'm going to use the cumulative layer combine the frame disposal and make sure that you tick the boxes to use the delay and the disposal for all frames. Then I click the export. And what we should get is an untitled GIF, which I'm gonna go ahead and throw into my workspace. We can take a look at it here, let's see how it looks. 
and there it goes, animated GIF. We could stop here, but for the web, animated GIFs are not as broadly applicable across multiple browsers. So to improve support, what I wanna do is actually take this animation and convert it into a video. And one way of doing that is by using the FFmpeg uh, library of uh, software. And here in Workspace, I can take a look and see here I do have my untitled GIF and I can check to see if I have FFmpeg installed and I do, I have version 2.8.4. You can install FFmpeg on Windows, Mac, Linux, etc. There are a bunch of websites to tell you how to do that. Okay, so how do I actually convert this GIF into an animation? So I'm going to use our resources uh, methods section of our website. If you come down, you will see that we do have converting images to animations, which talks about the methods I've just discussed. FFmpeg is available with Image Magic. It's also available in Osteo 4W. So depending on how you installed QGIS, you may already have it. All right, I have given you the command line here, which comes from the reference here from the gist GitHub account, FFmpeg, and luckily I've kept the file names nice and convenient here. I'm gonna copy this. Uh, what this is going to do is take the from GIF and convert it to a MP4, which is a video codec using the H.264 and making sure that the aspect ratio is even because that can sometimes get confused on some browsers and has the fast start so that it shows up pretty quickly. Uh, you can look at all of the information again on this gist, or gist rather. Copy it here, hit enter, it runs rather quickly, and we see that our untitled GIF is now untitled MPEG4, and I can open this up to take a peek, and we see that we now have a video of what was just an animated GIF. And we can use this video uh, using iframes and HTML so that we can watch this on the web, which is exactly what I did for creating this. All right, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching, and we will catch you next time.